I say, old chap, it's time for another Starbase summary. This time by a bloke who grew up in South Texas. Like, the closest I get to York is when I drive through York, South Carolina. Hey, massive thanks to Chris filling in for me in the last update. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> pip, pip, and all that. Hey, look at that. That's us. We're in that shot. You see me and EJ standing next to the uh, mailboxes there? EJ's taller than I am. We were right past Ship 34 when it rolled back from the uh, Massey's test site after some testing out that way on the SPMT scrollback. You can literally see EJ standing there. Uh, we were stuck behind that road closure for an hour and a half. Our pizza got cold. Don't ever order your pizza before you pass Massey's because you may get stuck behind a roadblock. But there you have it. We, we eventually did get our pizza and had to heat it up. And, you know, it just wasn't as good. But Ship 34 doing its work, coming back up the road. We did have some robotic cameras deployed over here right next to the entrance of the production site. All that sweet underglow on the SPMTs. A little dark, a little tough to see the dark ship in the dark but made it all the way back into the second Mega Bay, Mega Bay 2 back there, to continue work. You can actually see it got lifted up a little bit there, off of the stand. And then some boxes are being delivered into the Star Factory. I really feel like there'd be a more efficient way, like is there a loading dock or something? Some way to put those in? But anyways... Back over at the launch pad, here at the first launch mount, they're putting that booster alignment pin back in. And then we get to see this. Chopsticks. Very awkward load there. Rolling out for the second tower. Look at this. They actually look like framework for advanced TIE fighters or Star Destroyers or something like that. But uh, imagine the center of mass calculations that had to be done to figure out exactly how to put these things over the SPMTs with that long arm sticking out to the side. But this is good news. Any way you slice it, we've been watching the updates, the status on that second tower construction and these massive pieces of equipment getting rolled out to stand by for installation means we should be seeing that soon. You're gonna see more of that in the video. How do I know? Because I looked forward in the video? No, because I was at Starbase while this was happening. So I, I saw these things happening with my own eyes. My Mark One eyeballs in real time. <laughs> oh, that's a cool shadow. <laughs> Look, they do. They're so angular. They're delightfully angular and oddly shaped. Like normally things like that don't roll down the road. Is it a capsized steel sailboat? Is it a... Well, we already did the TIE Fighter joke. I don't know. Y'all tell me. What do they look like? <laughs> They're going to roll past the... T over the... T wow. Probably should have looked up there to see if that was going over our cameras, but we were shorter than the sign. There's that historical marker sign there, and we're off the road over where they, uh, the cars park. I'm actually curious if part of that load did not go over the camera itself, but uh, we were well off the side there, and we were way shorter than the sign that we're next to. Next to. Pretty sure. Right, we're about the same height as that sign, maybe, in any event. Rolling in to the second pad area here. Yeah, look at that. That's going over those cars, even. <laughs> oh, my. That is a delightfully awkward load to transport on SPMTs. Yeah, look at this. This is another... Oh, that was another pass going right over that... Uh, the historical marker sign. That definitely went right over our camera. That's too cool. That is too cool. Now, chopstick rollouts are something that happens every single day, but we've seen SpaceX uh, just continue on with the forward progress. Remember that one, was it a booster that had a car that was literally parked right on the side of the pavement? Like, the car really shouldn't have been parked there um, at all. Not further off the road like we are here, or those cars were, but it was right on the pavement, and they, they cleared out all the other cars, but that car, I guess they couldn't find the owner or whatever, and they just rolled right over the top of it. <laughs> Same thing there. Rolling the things out once, no need to wait around. Here we go back at the first launch mount, putting that second alignment pin in to help guide the boosters down into the correct alignment. Not always needed. You've seen them put boosters back on the launch mount with chopsticks after a catch. So uh, that is, I think, a, a 
guide to help them get everything lined up for the first try. You saw a couple pieces of the jig getting installed there, and some chopstick skate installation happening. Those huge black metal roller skates, they have like bearings, wheels in them, that ride up and down those rails on the tower. Remember, it's almost like the chopsticks and carriage are like a koala bear that's roller skating down a eucalyptus tree. How, how like, straight are eucalyptus trees usually? I'd have to look that up. I don't know if, I don't think that eucalyptus trees are, like, super crooked, so maybe the analogy doesn't really work. It's like a steel koala roller skating down a very straight eucalyptus tree. I'm, I'm not going to apologize for that. Moving right along. <laughs> Those big skates are what uh, keep the chopstick carriage on the tower rolling up and down. And you can actually see they have a little bit of positive contact there where they're in position. We've seen skates fall off the tower before, come crashing down when not properly secured. But so far, it looks like these were just fine. Very cool. There's the chopsticks hanging out near Pad B. The shot coming from Mary over here. I guess they have done the majority of the main work on them and moved them all the way over here where they'll have to load up that, uh, like sling that load with the crane with the wacky center of mass and then assemble it all on those red jigs. Hey, perfect timing. Chopstick carriage, it says. Oh, this is actually the chopstick carriage is the black part and it's resting on the red assembly jig. The red part is just temporary structure while they work on putting these awkwardly sized and shaped and center of mass and supported loads up. You don't want them dangling from a crane constantly, right? But those red beams give you a nice uh, solid structure with which to integrate this entire system and put it all... That is a very long bubble level. <laughs> that, I, I'm almost positive that that's a bubble level. It has all the marks of a bubble level. In any event, um, suddenly it's like, squirrel, bubble level tools are shiny to me. Tell me I'm wrong. Here we've got some work going on over by the tank farm. You can see the tank farm there in the background. And we're going to quickly jump back to Pad B's launch mount. Deck support beams have been removed. Still has the scaffolding up around it. Remember, that was the big indicator that showed us when the carriage was going to roll out. We saw, I was out there, and I saw them removing the scaffolding from the carriage, and then it rolled out shortly after. So we're going to keep on watching the launch mount here. The second launch mount with its delightfully water filled, water channely, whatever, um, top plate there. We'll watch for that scaffolding to come down. Is this going to be a constant job? I feel like this is a job that a robot could do. Were they just doing it for a photo shoot or something? Somebody's going to need to be out there every single day if they're trying to keep those windows clean. Trust us, we know because camera lenses. Got some more work happening on the flame deflector there. We just check in with it on occasion. And then gonna hop back over to the OLM once more. Is it just me or is there more tarps on top of it here? See that a lot when they're trying to use them as windbreaks, a lot of times to shield welding gases. Remember the way that some of your welding works is you have like a, an inert shielding gas that sort of keeps the, the oxygen air away from whatever you're welding so that you can uh, make the connection, I guess to put it very slightly, and you have this shielding to keep the, I think it's the oxygen or the regular air away from it. Look at this, we saw a significant amount of damage to the mural there in the middle and then all the way on the left-hand side. Uh, there's gonna get some zooms from Mary. Always the attention to detail we expect, but that looks like entire panels came off. It's not just the mural peeling off, it looks like a panel fell off and how that works I don't know typically with large structures like this you'll have blowout panels because you're going to have a wind blowing into one open end of the structure and if you have something that's allowing that wind to sort of build up pressure inside the structure or against one side like that you might get blowout like that so you have pass-throughs or redirects or something like that to let that structure alleviate the pressure maybe not something they planned for there maybe something they'll learn their lesson on if that is in fact what was happening panels blowing out to the side from internal pressure, not from external. But we'll see how they fix that. There's that second launch pad. Get a little bit of a pan across here. There, of course, the red temporary structures with the chopstick carriage on it, being attended by multiple cranes, and then the chopsticks in two pieces. I mean, two chopsticks. Like, there is one chopstick 
that makes up a set of two chopsticks. <laughs> if that makes sense. Anyways. We're going to continue watching this. And of course, if you want to keep up with what's happening in real time, all of this work is happening live on Starbase Live, our 24-7 coverage of what's happening at Starbase. You can actually just go to nsf.live slash starbase, or honestly, just type nsf.live, and it'll show you all of our 24-7 streams. Maybe I should pin that comment or just put that in the comments or something like that. Remind me in the comments if I forget to do that when this video releases. It's just nsf.live, and it'll bring you to all of our 24-7 coverage so you can hang out and chat with like-minded space nerds like yourself who apparently have nothing to do in the middle of the day. Or the middle of the night, or whatever. Ah, uh, yes. Now, an important distinction here, these chopsticks are a little bit shorter than the orig original chopsticks. And a couple different things may go into that. Uh, the accuracy that they've been landing these boosters, like getting them right in between the sticks at a pretty close to the middle of the sticks, has been really impressive. So maybe they just don't need as big of a landing pad, so they don't need them to be as long. And then also, if you don't make them as long, they don't have as big, as big of a moment of inertia, or I guess a moment that the momentum sort of builds up in as they swing. A shorter stick will be easier to get moving and stop when it reaches the target than a longer stick. That longer stick has a longer levator arm or moment to, uh, to control. So a couple different changes to these new shorter chopsticks hopefully does not affect the catching of the ships or boosters. But folks, we are rapidly approaching a time where we see a booster caught on one tower and a ship caught on the other tower. I think they've got a couple launches that they need to get under their belt to prove that that ship in a new design is going to stick together and whatever mitigations on leaks or fires or explosions that hit them in the last flight um, are mitigated, I guess to use the exact same word I just said, for the next flight, but want to make sure that that breakup does not occur as it's coming back in over land for a catch on the second tower. I would not be surprised if we see a attempted ship catch in the first part of this year. Stay tuned. I like it. This just says Tower 2. It's Tower 2. Delightful number of bolts. You know, are those rivets or are they bolts? Y'all can correct me. I guess it depends on exactly how they're attached. But text, test tank 16 rolling into the star factory also catching what we think is booster 17's transfer tube it's the long thing there see it's a little tough with the dust but the long thing down there at the bottom but folks that's going to do it for this star base summary again big thanks to chris catching up for me last week remember you can change the channel you can change the audio tracks if you want to listen in spanish or german if that's your native language or you just want a good time my name is john for nsf thanks to the entire team and we will see you nerds later